Good morning. I am Kavish and I am Arohi. A warm welcome to all the teachers and my dear friends. Today we have gathered here to celebrate the Earth Day. It is a day to honor our home planet and to remind everyone about the importance of our ecosystem. Yes, we focus on how we can look after our planet and we all can help our planet in our own little ways. I am jam packed with sheer excitement already as we have a plethora of events lined up today. In fact, we have been working towards this big day for the last few weeks. Don't you agree? In GIIS, Earth Day is not just one day. It is imbibed with our curriculum and the activities that we do. Before we start, may I request Rekha ma'am to address the gathering? Good morning to all the students who are seated here in the MPH, all those who are watching me from the classrooms. Wish you all a very happy Earth Day. Now this year we had a week long celebration throughout the primary campus, throughout the primary class, whether it be CBSE classes, whether it be PYP classes. There was a lot of events which were organized, a lot of competition, a lot of different kinds of learning experiences which were organized for this particular day. Now the reason why we had these week-long celebrations is one of the important things that we need to think about. Like I always mention to all the students in every Earth Day celebration, Earth Day cannot be a single day. Every day has to be an Earth Day in our minds. And we need to uh, do whatever we are doing, not to show off on one particular day, but to ensure that we have a responsibility towards the planet. We have a responsibility to keeping the resources that we have on this planet uh, safe. And there, sh there is enough for everybody. But we may not have enough just for splurging. So we need to share with everybody. We have to see that it is not just the human beings which are important. The animals, the little ants which are around, every living thing has got its own ro uh, importance and they are all required for the sustenance of this valuable earth. We know that we are spending, the, many governments may be spending millions of dollars trying to find out more about Mars and more about other planets. But when we have our own planet, which is in danger, what should we do about it? Can we just discard it and everybody move off to some other planet? It's not possible. And can one person, one president or one prime minister somewhere alone do something to save this planet? That's also not possible. It is the responsibility of each one of us. Each one of us have to do what we can do, what is there within our capacity, capability. So as uh, young children, you make it a habit. Make a habit of not wasting papers. Make a habit of doing as many, recycle as many things as possible. Use things to the fullest so that uh, you don't need to keep buying new things just because they are in fashion. So those are the little things that we do. We need to learn how to do those kind of small things. It doesn't cost anything, right? It co doesn't cost anything to do those little actions. So it is just a matter of creating a habit that we have to develop. I'm sure the events which you've had in class, different activities that you've had in class has been uh, worthy enough, has been good enough to get this message across to you. And keep remembering it throughout. Don't wait for the next Earth Day to think of it again. We have to think of it all 365 days. So this Earth Day, let this be a message to all of you that do the little part that we are supposed to be doing. Be the change that you want to see in everybody else. Thank you. Thank you, 
Eureka ma'am for your encouraging words. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get the ball rolling. While recycling is great in a lot of ways, guess what? Our grade 1 and 2 students participated in the event Little Eco Footprints as they made innovative trash bins and our mighty Green Wave students made creative posters on eco-friendly ideas for the school and their neighborhood. While grade 3, 4 and 5 students have participated in competitions of Planeteers and Green Samaritans, they converted waste into materials that can be reused without throwing everything into the trash and presented their ideas for sustainable Singapore. They also shared inspirational stories of people who have done their part in protecting our environment. Let's watch videos of these competitions. Wow, that was indeed a beautiful compilation of the projects made by students. I never knew a bottle can be recreated into so many creative ways. I couldn't agree with you more, Arohi. And now we move on to a short dance drama by our students on saving trees and protecting our earth. Mother Earth 
Can you feel her heart beat beneath your feet? Heart beat beneath your feet. Heart beat beneath your feet. Listen to the animals, listen to the trees, listen to the spirits of the earth begging us, please stop listening to grief. Begging us, please stop listening to creed. Program. So now, may I call our Green Samaritans on stage to share their thoughts on this day of environmental awareness. Our first Green Samaritan is Rishi Vardhan. Good morning to one and all present here today. Today, I'm going to talk about two stories that inspired me to do my bit in order to save the environment. My first story is about a man called Jadav Payang. Also known as the forest man of India, Payang plants a tree every day for the last 40 years. His work res resulted in a 1,360-acre forest, which is bigger than Central Park in New York. Wow, that's very big. Now that forest is home to wildlife, such as tigers, elephants, snakes, reptiles, etc. Payang vowed to plant a tree every day until his last breath in order to save the environment. My second story is about a beach in Mumbai. That beach was filled with garbage. One day, a man called Afro Shah visited it. He saw the beach was littered with garbage and started cleaning it up. From that day onwards, he inspired more and more people to lend a hand to clean, the clean up the beach. 
Uh, more than 1,000 volunteers are lending a hand to clean up the beach with more than 5.3 million kilograms of garbage collected. Wow, that's very big. Once a beach filled with garbage is now a popular tourist spot. Those are the two stories that inspire me to do my bit in order to save the environment. Be part of solution, not pollution. Thank you. Thank you, Rishi. Next, I call our Green Samaritan, Vihana Kishore. Good morning, teachers and my dear friends. Today, I'm going to talk about an Indian environmentalist called Salu Marada Timaka from the state of Karnataka in India. She was married to Chikkaya, who was a laborer. After several years of marriage, the couple could not have their own children. So, to fill the emptiness in their life, the couple decided to plant banyan trees and raise them as their own children. Timaka, along with her husband, has planted and tended to 385 banyan trees along a stretch of 4 kilometers in a row on the highway near their village. She has also planted nearly 8,000 other trees too. Wow, that's a lot. They nurtured and took care of all those trees, just like parents do for their children. Thus, she was recognized for her work and got the name Salu Marada Temaka. Salu Marada means a row of trees in Canada. Growing and taking care of 385 banyan trees was not easy, as trees need at most care and constant observation. Timaka and her husband made sure that they showered all those trees and plants with their love and care. Every day after work, the couple walked the four kilometer stretch from their village and watered all those plants and trees till they bore fruit. Timaka was awarded with the prestigious Padma Shri in 2019 for her selfless work towards nature and is also the recipient of many other awards and recognitions. So friends, what I learned from her story is that we should always love and take care of the trees and plants around us as our own family. Let's nurture the nature so that we can have a better future. Thank you. Thank you, Vihana. Now, I call our next Green Samaritan, Hasini. Hello friends, I'm here to share a wonderful idea with you all. How many of you felt bad while throwing food or wasting food? Can I see some hands up? Wow, that's a lot. That's nice. Let me introduce you to my project named Sing Share, Singapore Chef. Let me start with some facts about food wastage in Singapore. Did you know about Two bowls of rice per person every day is wasted and that is about 51,000 double-decker buses. Wow, that's huge. Let me share with you my idea to solve this problem and create a sustainable Singapore. My solution is to create an app in our smartphones that can help us easily to reduce food wastage in Singapore. Let me explain you how the app works. First, I buy 20 eggs and I use 10 of them and the rest 10 of them are expiring in another few days. At the same time, I need to travel somewhere so I don't dump these eggs. Here, my app will be used. I will post the eggs with its photo and its expiry date. I'll sell it for free or minimal charge. My neighbor takes it and uses it. We both are happy because my eggs didn't go waste and my neighbor got it when needy. I hope you liked my idea and I wish to make this idea come true one day. Thank you. Thank you, Hasini. Let's give a big round of applause. Thank you all for inspiring us to take various methods to become environmentally conscious in our decisions to produce less waste and create better habits for a better earth. 
Moving on, we have a song presented by students on the odd day. As they appreciate our mother road and urges all of us to save the planet. reminds us to protect every inch of the earth by keeping it green and clean. We now welcome you all to the prize distribution ceremony of the competitions held in school on the theme Invest in Our Planet. I request Rekha ma'am to please come on stage to give away the certificates to the winners. Grade 1. As we call their names of the winners, we request them to please come on the stage and collect their certificates. Grade 1 winners are the third runner-up for the Little Eco Footprints is Tejas. The second runner-up for the Little Eco Footprints is Madhav. And the first position for the Little Eco Footprints goes to Lakshita. The third runner-up for the Mighty Green Waves is Abhijana. The second runner-up for the Mighty Green Waves is Likhita. And the first position for the Mighty Green Waves goes to Ardha. Grade 2 winners are the third runner up for the Little Eco Footprints is Mrigunk. The second runner-up for the Little Eco Footprints is Gopala Krishna. And the first position for the Little Eco Footprints goes to Aditya.
The third runner-up for the Mighty Green Waves is Vihana. The second runner-up for the Mighty Green Waves is Clara. And the first position for the Mighty Green Waves goes to Akshat. Great, great three winners are the third runner-up for the Planet Years is Manasui. The second runner-up for the Planet Years is Isabella. The second runner-up for the Planet Years is Isabella. And the first position for the Planet Years goes to Siddesh. Great four winners are. The third runner-up for the Planet Years is Jaslyn. A great three winners. The third runner-up for the Green Samaritans is Sri Hanrol. The second runner-up for the Green Samaritans is Savil. And the first position for the Green Samaritans goes to Rishi. Great four winners are the third runner up for the Planet Years is Jaslyn. The second runner up for the Planet Years is Anvitha. Third runner up for the fourth position for the Planet Years goes to Vihana. Grade 5 winners are the third runner up for the planet years is, uh, is Anvatha. Oh, the third runner up for the Green Samaritans is Riddhi Karnati. The second runner-up for the Green Samaritans is Sia Jadhav. And the first position for the Green Samaritans goes to Twarat Khandelwal. Great five winners are the third runner up for the planet years is Anvatha. The second runner up for the planet years is Ashwin. And the first position for the planet years goes to Anagya. The third runner-up for the Pla Green Samaritans is Zoya. The second runner-up for the Green Samaritans is Ansina. And the first position for the Green Samaritans goes to Hasini.
Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you, Rekha ma'am, for giving away the certificates to the winners. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you, Rekha ma'am, for giving away the certificates to the winners. Now I will call Aruna ma'am to, uh, to address the guest of honor. Congratulations to the winners. Thank you, Rekha ma'am, for giving away the certificates. It gives me an immense pleasure today to introduce our guest of honor, Ms. Padma Rani. She's fondly called Ms. Padma ma'am. She is a lover of mother soil, an activist in NEA, and most importantly, was a part of GIIS family. She has closely worked with Singapore Environment Council. She has volunteered Earth Helper, Plastic Lights Singapore, National Environment Agency, and Tetra Pak collaborations. These are just some of her collaborations. I'm so grateful to invite her virtually today. Let's have a short video of hers as she addresses today's event. Good morning to everyone present here. I'm Padma Rani Srivatsan, teacher and horticulturist, and I have passion for caring for the environment and sustainable living. I'm also a proud alumni teacher of GIIS. It's an indeed an honor for me to address you all on this special occasion of Earth Day. First of all, let me wish you all a very happy 52nd Earth Day. You all know that it started, the Earth Day started back in 1970 in the United States of America by a senator named Gaylord Nelson and is also known as the founder of Earth Day. He realized that the quality of the air, environment, and water was depleting due to our actions. And to uh, increase the awareness among the people, this movement was started. And it has since then it has stayed, it's become a global affair. And he also thought that it will be a perfect day for all of us to uh, remember the abundance of um, abundance that nature has given us and also want to create a public awareness of world's environmental problems. Let us now watch a short video which will make us care for a mother earth. Fun fact, planet Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Mankind, about 140,000 years old. Let me put that in perspective. If you condense the Earth's lifespan into 24 hours, that's one full day, then we have been here on this planet for, drum roll please, three seconds. Three seconds. And look what we've done. We have modestly named ourselves Homo sapiens, meaning wise man. But is man really so wise? Smart, yes, and it's good to be smart, but not too smart for your own good. Yes, we have split the atom. Yes, we build clever machines that navigate the universe in search of new homes, but at the same time, those atoms we split created nuclear warfare. In our quest to explore the galaxy, rejects and neglects the home that we have here now, so no, that cannot be wisdom. 
wisdom is different. While intelligence speaks, wisdom listens, and we willingly covered our ears to Mother Nature's screams and closed our eyes to all of her help-wanted signs. Wisdom knows that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so if we were wise, we would not be shocked when we see storms that are stronger than ever before, or more drought, hurricanes, and wildfire than ever before, because there's more pollution than ever before, more carbon, more trees cut down than ever before. At a record pace, we have increased the extinction of animals by 1,000 times the normal rate. What a feat. In the next 10 to 100 years, every beloved animal character in every children's book is predicted to go extinct. Lion gone, rhinos gone, tiger, gorilla, elephant, polar bear gone in three seconds. Species that have been here longer than us will be gone because of us in this three seconds. In an existence shorter than a Vine video, we turn the circle of life into our own personal conveyor belt. Somebody, anybody help. We were given so much. The only planet in this solar system with life. I mean, we are one in a million. No, actually, scientifically, we are one in a billion, trillion, trillion. That's a one followed by 33 zeros. And I don't want to get too spiritual, but how are we not a miracle? We are perfectly positioned to the sun so we don't burn, but not too distant so we don't turn to ice. Goldilocks said it best, we are just right. This paradise where we are given medicine from trees, not coincidentally, but because like the song says, we are family, literally. Everything, every species is connected genetically from the sunflower to the sunfish. And this is what we must recognize before it's too late because the real crisis is not global warming, environmental destruction, or animal agriculture. It is us. These problems are symptoms of us, byproducts of us. Our inner reflection, loss of connection has created this misdirection. We have forgotten that everything contributes to the perfection of Mother Nature. Corporations keep us unaware and disconnected, but they have underestimated our strength. Contrary to popular belief, millions are waking up out of their sleep, seeing our home being taken right up under our feet. We cannot allow our history to be written by the wicked, greedy, and loony. It is our duty to protect Mother Nature from those who refuse to see her beauty. Call me crazy, but I believe we should have the right to eat food that's safe with ingredients we can pronounce. Drink water that is clean. Marvel at trees. Breathe air free of toxins. These are natural rights, not things that can be bargained for in Congress. See, they want you to feel powerless, but it has been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can cause a typhoon halfway around the world but when enough people come together, we too will make waves and watch the world into a new era filled with love and connection, freedom for all without oppression. But it is up to you, yes, you watching this behind this screen to make the effort because time is of the essence and only together can we make it to the fourth second. It's a very powerful message that we all saw now. So it's up to us to take care of the environment. Dear students, we will not get overwhelmed with the atrocities that's happening for the earth. As students, I know there are many things that you can do within your reach, in your school, at home, and for the community. And still we can reduce the impact of our actions on the environment and mitigate the climate change. So we're talking about how students can do it. So I've been doing, I've been, I'm so proud to be part of GIS since school gave me the opportunity and freedom to take students to the level where they, they understood the value of nature and they did a lot of, we did a lot of impact. The students did a lot of work for caring the environment. Now it's, from three hours to reduce, reuse, and recycle, we have come to five hours. Refuse. We need to say no to single-use plastic, no to single-use straw, and reduce the impact on the landfill. And also, let us reduce the consumption of unwanted things. Let us not buy things just because it's there in the market. Let us um, reduce the amount of general waste. And also, we should start reusing by stop using the disposables, replace them with more sustainable alternatives. And 
recycle things. There are many things that can be recycled. And especially electronic waste in Singapore is about 60,000 tons every year. And that's equivalent to discarding of 70 mobile phones per person in Singapore. This number is expected to increase with the greater spending power and new technologies constant, constantly replacing the old ones. And then rot. It's nothing but composting, which is very close to my heart, which we have been doing in the school. And the outcome of the composting is so enriching that we nurture the whole garden there and produce a lot of fruits and herbs in the school. So it's not difficult at all, students. We have done it, we have proved it, and I think you are still will be able to do it. Here are, here are a few examples of what we did to reduce the impact of landfill. Since Singapore is a very small nation, so we need to take care of our landfill. This initiative was taken by us, and we all know that we use bin liners in the classroom. So well, when we are segregating the trash as plastic, tin, and paper, and very little will go into your dustbin. So we replace the single-use plastic by using newspaper bin liners. And then students started bringing their home sc kitchen scraps, and we did composting in the school, which was used in the school garden to grow a lot of vegetables and fruits. We also Students did a beach cleanup to save our marine environments, I'm sorry, marine animals. And we also went to, the, our kindergarten students went to NTUC and they enriched the people over there to bring their own bags and not to buy stuff using single-use plastic. And one more initiative which was taken by the school, I think it's still running, running strong, we were advocates for beverage carton recycle in tie-up with Tetra, Tetra Pak Singapore. Our students visited a lot of local schools, local kindergartens, to um, you know, uh, show them how we recycle and how every layer of the beverage carton can be recycled. Knowing something is good, but sharing our good practices with the community. Since we are caring for the earth, it's not enough that we do it only for ourselves. We need to reach out to the society, to the community, to the other people in the world. So we went in search of avenues where we can share our good practices through various events organized by uh, National Environment Agency Singapore, National Parks Board, Singapore Environment Council, Plastic Light Singapore, to name a few. Coming to me, since I'm very passionate about caring for the environment. It all started with me starting the composting way back in 2009 in the yard in front of my home in Singapore, which started as a small project with a small bin as shown in the picture here, in the first picture. You can see the what went inside was all my kitchen scraps, raw kitchen scraps, and what came out was pure black gold, which was used in my at home, in the school, and also I shared it with the community outside the school. Now it's 10 plus years, may over a decade now. I'm still happy that I'm continuing, but the bin has grown much bigger. I have two bigger bins. In fact, I go and collect uh, the raw kitchen scraps from my neighbors, and then we do the composting in front of my house. So it's possible, children, it's possible. It's nothing is impossible, and I know the earth is in good hands, and GIS, all the teachers, principal, and everybody there, I think they support in all these initiatives, and you can do it. Another project of mine was, when I go for a walk every day, I used to see a lot of litter, though you find Singapore is a clean city, but still we find a lot of trash lying around. So I took it upon myself, and whenever I go for a walk, I collect the recyclables and then the common trash, and I throw it in the bin to make our environment clean. We need not wait for anybody to do this work, this job. So students, yes, we all together can do it. 
and take care of Mother Earth, which is the need of the hour. And for you all, I think you need not go beyond the four walls of the school to find the role models. You have your seniors who are already doing a great job. And I think you can take their guidance and go forward. And I'm pretty sure your teachers, your principal, and the management will support you in all these endeavors. I wish you all a very happy Earth Day once again. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. God bless you all. Now, I would like to invite Aruna ma'am to propose a word of thanks. It gives me an immense pleasure to deliver this word of thanks for this event. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's event a resounding success. I wholeheartedly extend my thanks to our Vice Principal, Ms. Rekha Rachel Vargas, and our Primary Coordinator, Ms. Lalitambika Ramakrishnan, to ex express their continuous support and guidance throughout. My heartfelt thanks to Ms. Kritika Ramakrishnan, Head of the Department of Science, for her effort, support, and guidance towards this event. Further, I'm grateful to my dear colleague, Ms. Juby Karu, for her involvement and willingness to take on the completion of tasks beyond her comfort zones. My sincere thanks to my dear colleague, Ms. Avni Grover, for her support throughout the event. Also, my heartfelt thanks to Ms. Deepshika Tripathi and the AV team for instilling confidence in us in a very short span of time, saying that it's going to be a smooth event. You're right, ma'am. Indeed, it was a smooth event. Also, my sincere thanks to Ms. Urmi Deshai, Gayatri Joshi, and Meera Raji for training the students in a very short span of time. Also, my heartfelt thanks to Ms. Sushma Tiwari and Manju Ma'am for their unwavering support who stood by us always and motivated us to get things done. I will ever remain grateful for all of you and thank you all for immensely being with us today. Thank you and happy Earth Day once again. Thank you, ma'am. And finally, on this day, let us pledge to be good stewards of our common home for now and for generations to come. Happy Earth Day to all once again. Thank you all for joining us today and making this event a 